Good afternoon, I'm Kirk Clark. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my background in art. Both of my parents were artists and uh, very accomplished artists. My father, uh, who has been deceased since 1990, uh, actually won a citywide uh, art competition uh, in Kansas City when he was 12 years old. He inadvertently uh, entered into the adult division and won it. <laughs> and my mother was a uh, not only an actress, uh, she was Martha Heyer's understudy at the University of Pacific, but she was a very, very fine artist in her own right too. And they were, they were collectors, uh, very, very uh, well-educated collectors. My father uh, was an expert, uh, considered to be the one, one of the top authorities in the world on uh, starting on art done in about 1907 in the Distill Group, of which Piet Mondrian was uh, basically the father of that movement. There were four artists that were included. And then that, that interest moved, evolved into the Bauhaus, which was a very, very important uh, art movement in the 30s. It was really, uh, along with the Distill Group and Mondrian, the, the abstract expressionism was really coming into its own during Bauhaus. And uh, fortunately, as a young man, starting at the age of 16, I got to travel with them on several occasions to Europe um, over the years and meet artists, museum curators and museum directors. And Dad had uh, communication with over 3,000 artists around the world that were contemporary artists. And he kept all the correspondence. And the Smithsonian Institute found out what he was doing. And they set a truck down from Washington, D.C. and asked if they could pick up all of his files and record them to become part of the National Archives. And he said, yeah, I'd be delighted. And I'll be doggone if about six months later they didn't return everything in perfect order. I hope that means that they didn't run out of time to record it and they just returned it. But I think they just did a great job. Uh, but my dad was on the University of California Berkeley Fine Arts Council, the University of Michigan Fine Arts Council, University of Texas Fine Arts Council, and uh, the Art Council at uh, Louisiana State University. And he was the uh, guest curator at the Archer M. Huntington Museum, which is now the Blanton Museum at the University of Texas for eight years. So I guess I could say I couldn't help but be an artist. And uh, I was very lucky. Uh, they brought me a canvas when I was 10 years of age, some oil paints, and uh, some linseed oil and a few brushes. And they said, go at it. We want to see what you do. And so I, you know, I, was, I didn't know what to paint. Finally, I decided it was during a period of time where everyone was really, really, you know, very concerned about the nuclear potential for a nuclear holocaust with Russia. And so I decided to do a self-portrait, but in kind of a Cubist style. And I'll never forget, I was in this awestruck, wide, eyes wide open look, uh, and there was a bomb blast coming onto the canvas from the left side, and the left side of me was melting from the heat from the nuclear explosion. And I showed my parents when I'd done it, and they said, did you do that, or did someone much older do that? And I said, no, I, I did that. And they said, well, you need to enter that in the Mission Art Festival. So my mother drove me over and I entered and inadvertently, like my dad had done, I entered into the adult division, not the kids division. And I'll be doggone if I didn't win first prize. And I was so proud, I picked up my $1. They refunded my $1 entry fee and gave me a blue ribbon, which I have someplace, I know not where. And uh, as I was walking back with my parents' big smiles, this lady kind of jumped out in front of me and put her hand up and said, young man, I want to buy that painting from you. And I said, well, I'm, uh, I appreciate that very much, but it's not for sale. It's my first painting. I want to keep it. And she said, no, you don't understand, young man. I want, I want to buy this, uh, this painting. And I said, well, I'm sorry. It's not for sale. Well, she shuffles around in her purse and she pulls out four crisp $100 bills. And she looks me straight in the eye and she said, I want to buy your painting. Well, I grabbed that money so fast and shoved that painting over to her so fast. That's probably the first indication that I was going to be a car dealer someday. And that's what I am today in addition to being an artist. I'm a Chevrolet dealer, a Honda dealer, also an Allstate insurance agent. So I'm a strange mix. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about the art of what you're seeing some behind me. 
First of all, I have to acknowledge to you that I'm not a mathematician. I barely got through math, but it's so funny because my art is fundamentally about math. Uh, I can't explain it in mathematical terms. I have to explain it to you in artistic terms. But uh, it's been a very unusual journey for me. In the year 2000, I attended a very, very interesting uh, uh, nature, art not art festival, but it was a tropical nature festival here in MacGillan. And one of the guest speakers was Dr. Bernie Krauss, who had been Bob Seger's lead guitarist for many, many years. Somebody recommended to him that he record the sounds of nature and play his guitar with the sounds in the background rather than other instrumentation. And that fascinated him. So he went out and recorded something. He was living in L.A. at the time. And went out into the countryside and recorded something and was fascinated with what he heard. And he was so excited by it, he put his guitar up for three years and traveled the world. Well, I had two, two lectures that I attended of his while he was here in, in McAllen. And I was fascinated. And uh, I bought all of his recordings. And uh, this was in the year 2000. And as I listened to the recording, something weird was kind of happening in my head. I, in fact, I thought it was a little wacky, but uh, I could see the geometric shapes of the sounds. And at the different octave levels, I was actually uh, seeing different colors. And I had no explanation for that at the time, but that's what I began to paint. And in the year 2005, uh, I went to a, uh, a seminar symposium in Santa Fe, uh, held by Dr. John Reed uh, from England, who was a sound engineer. And uh, he explained all this and introduced me to the concept of synesthesia. And apparently I'm a synthony. I see sound, I hear color. Some people even taste color. Thank God I don't. After listening to these sounds, it, it was just amazing. And I, I've always enjoyed the ocean. I've always enjoyed snorkeling. And I've always enjoyed astronomy. I started painting these sounds that I was hearing from recordings done underwater in Antarctica. And then I began to realize, hey, you know, I'm seeing these many of these same forms in outer space at night uh, through a telescope uh, that I see undersea. So I started in 2005, five years later, after I was introduced to Krauss, I started a series called The Universe Below. And it combined what I was seeing in outer space with what I was seeing undersea. And finally, I made this crazy connection that, hey, this is all about sound. And for some reason, I've, I've really, uh, I really need to, to relax about it and just let it speak to me. And frankly, right now, I don't know where my recordings of Dr. Bernie Krause's work are, but I listen to thousands of hours and it, it's so internalized that it's, it's natural now. People say, what do you paint with? Well, this is what I paint with. And this is what I paint with. And uh, I also use brushes. I use dots. And just so you know, in the dots that you see in all the artwork around you, each one represents a molecule of sound that's being transformed into a photon and wave of light. Now, it's my theory, and it's shared by some, uh, that when the universe was created, it was through the command of God for the universe to begin. And we would know that as the Big Bang. Several years ago, they discovered there had been sound in outer space for 750 million years following the Big Bang. And those sounds, the sounds of planets, uh, have been recorded by satellites adventuring into outer space. And it's beyond me because you would think if sound needs atmosphere to transfer the molecules of sound in it, yet you can hear the tonality of planets as satellites pass by it in a vacuum. How do you explain that? Well, the only way I can explain it is kind of speculate and figure, well, delightfully, that may be the voice of God who continues to create and recreate uh, the universe as it evolves over time. So it's, it's been a, a very exciting uh, journey for me. Uh, I've been doing it now you know, for a lot of years, particularly uh, based on sound for over 20 years, approaching 21 years. And uh, I just finished having a show at uh, IMAS 
called Cosmic Connections, which actually represented uh, work that I've done over the last 64 years. This new show coming up, uh, The Common Journey of Mathematics and Art, is just fascinating to me because what I find out is I place the dots in, in not any particular pattern that you would say would lead you to believe that it was mathematically done, but somehow there is a connection. There's an intuitive connection to the relationships. And I was reminded of two of my father's very favorite artists that uh, I actually got to meet, one in Switzerland, one in Austria as a young man. One of them was Max Beale, B-I-L-L, uh, who was the, uh, the head of the Swiss constructivist art movement. And uh, their, their whole movement was based on spatial relationships, mathematical spatial relationships, and also mathematical uh, calculations for colors. So that certain colors fit into a mathematical formula along with the spatial relationships in a very, very interesting way, which also affected that period of time in, in Swiss uh, uh, architecture. Uh, the other artist that had a powerful influence on me was Ernst Fuchs, who was the dean, the head of the Austrian School of the Fantastic, and uh, got to meet him at his wonderful uh, uh, wonderful home and, and studio, massive, uh, on the way from Austria to Switzerland. And my father had met him uh, back in the 60s, and had actually had taken my mother to one of his shows in Paris, France, met him there. And uh, when I got to meet uh, uh, Professor Fuchs, uh, it was really interesting. I said, do you happen to remember my mother and father, Charles and Dorothy Clark? And he said, but of course. He said, I've never met a man that knew more about me than me. <laughs> and Dad was a real researcher. And quite frankly, uh, over a period of quite a number of years, uh, they ended up putting collections together for 34 museums and universities around the country including uh, uh, UTRGV, which was Pan American University at the time, uh, and the University of Texas. Uh, probably the largest collection of, uh, that they gave was to the uh, uh, museum, which is now the Blanton Museum at the University of Texas, which has 750 artworks in it. And they were primary collectors of works on paper, uh, prints, limited edition prints or monoprints, one-of-a-kind prints. Uh, I'm also a printmaker. Uh, I don't have any of those in this show because I wanted to show my paintings. But I just want to let you know, those of you that have aspirations to become artists or just simply enjoy it for your own pleasure, I encourage you to do that. And you've got some wonderful places like STC and UTRGV that have uh, very dedicated instructors that would be happy to help you get into it and study it and understand it and really appreciate it because I've been doing this now going on to my 65th year. And I feel like I never have enough time to do what I'd like to do. Uh, but as I'm approaching very quickly retirement, I realize that art is, art is my heart. And I want to share my heart with you in this show, along with the other artists. And I'm so glad that we have a mathematician uh, to really help to connect the dots, so to speak, for us. And uh, I think you'll see the relationship there. And I would encourage you to, uh, to come to the... Uh, Come to the show and enjoy the show and support your art community during these difficult times. But I feel very privileged and very honored. I want to thank my wife, Jerry, for allowing me a lot of latitude to do my artwork and uh, spend time and energy with it. Uh, she's become quite a critic in her own, own right and has a very good artist's eye. And uh, I just, uh, I just, I want to say thank you very much to the Rio Grande Valley and MacAllen in particular and STC in particular. I've been involved in STC over the years uh, for a period of time as uh, on their Scholars Advisory Council and also working as chairman of the uh, Valley Chevrolet, uh, actually Valley Auto Dealers, to put together an automotive uh, class structure which continues after many years and is very important in the development of new technicians uh, for our for our enterprises. But I want to thank you, and I want to God bless you, and I, I want you to stay well, stay happy, and thank you so much for this opportunity. God bless you.